Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. In today's episode, we're going to be painting the Sepulchral Guard. I'm going to be splitting this video into two parts, one part showing you the bone and one part showing you the rest. The bone's going to be done on one of the petitioners and the rest of the model's going to be shown on the leader here. I'm going to start out by base coating all of the bone areas with rhinoxide. It's not very important if you get good coverage with this, because it's going to be uh, dry brushed over afterwards. So now we're going to dry brush some Steel Legion Drab. This is a fairly heavy dry brush, just all over the bone areas. Also, some areas which are going to be flat and smooth, take some Steel Legion Drab and just uh, paint on those areas with some thin glazes. This is mostly the top of the skull and the shoulder blades I found. Now dry brush some Rakarth flesh and we're going to be doing this only with down strokes and it's a much softer dry brush than the last time. This is just to build up some highlights on the bone areas. As before, any areas where you want to look smooth, take some Rakarth flesh and just paint it in with some glazes. This is our last dry brush, we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh and we're just going to hit the uh, most raised areas and prominent areas such as the rib cage and on the uh, skull only using down strokes as much as you can while you're painting the bones for these guys also remember to paint the bones that are on the bases it's good to get that out of the way early If you want to create a kind of more chipped look, take some Pallid Witch Flesh on a sponge and just dab it over some of the raised areas, just to add a bit more detail. I then went back and took some Steel Legion Drab, watered down to quite a thin wash consistency, and just started putting that back into the shadow areas where I wanted them to uh, be a bit smoother. Last step, take some Agrax Earthshade and wash it over the entire model. This will make sure that the areas between the ribs, for example, are nice and dark. And when it's dry, it should look like this. So I start by painting everything that's not bone black, as normal. But the metal on these guys, I want it to look really rusty. Like, these guys have been buried in the ground. That's super rusty. Take some Monfang Brown and just base coat all of the metal areas with it. You want to apply this in some fairly thin layers because we're going to be sponging up after this and that's going to add some texture so a couple of thin layers of Mornfang Brown jobs are good. Then take some Scrag Brown on your sponge, get rid of most of it on a piece of tissue and start dabbing it all over your rusty areas. Next up, some Fire Dragon Bright, same deal, just on slightly less area than before. Now we're going to take some Iron Breaker and do the same, just touching up the most raised areas, the most exposed areas.
and I'm going to take some VMA Chrome. You could also use Runefang Steel or um, Stormhost Silver, and I'm just going to edge line all of the uh, metal areas. Also, anywhere I want it to be a bit shinier, I'll also paint some of that in there. Now we're going to base coat the shield with Thousand Suns Blue. Um, this will take about two to three coats to cover, do it nice and thin. If you get any on the uh, steel rusty trim, it's okay, it's quite easy to repaint that and it's very fast to repaint it. Now we're going to do a wet blend here, so use some slow dry retarder just to make sure the paint doesn't dry on your model. Mix it in with your Thousand Suns Blue, about two parts paint to one part retarder, and give yourself a nice wet base coat to start with. Then take some Araman Blue and just start wet blending this into the top half of the shield. You should be able to create a nice gradient between the, th the wet Thousand Suns Blue and the Araman Blue. If necessary, take some more Thousand Suns Blue and just kind of paint it back into the bottom half. Also take a little bit of black, mix it in with your Thousand Suns Blue and just create another gradient on the bottom half of the shield and make the shield look nice and curved. Now I'm going to base coat this raised detail with Mornfang Brown. I'm also going to use this to base coat any other areas on the model that I want to be a copper colour. Now I'm going to take some Balthazar Gold and I'm going to paint in all of my copper areas with this. The brown is mostly just to give this something to sit on top of because it's quite a translucent paint so it covers easier if you do it this way. Now to give it a bit more shine I'm going to take some Vallejo Metal Colour Copper and I'm just going to highlight with that. You could also use Hashet Copper or Rune Lord Brass from Games Workshop. Now I'm going to take my armor wash and I'm going to wash that over all of the shield and all of the metal areas that I've done so far. That includes the copper. Make sure it doesn't pull too much on the flat surfaces. If necessary, use a clean brush in order to wick away the excess. Once that's dry, if necessary, take some Abaddon Black thinned down and use this to kind of edge line the uh, rim of the shield. Now we're going to paint the cloth and we're going to base coat it with Nagaroth Knight. I'm going to apply this in about three thin layers, nicely watered down, just to get a really smooth um, finish. And again we're going to do some wet blending, so two parts paint, one part slow dry. And just cover all of your cloth areas with some Nagaroth Knight with your slow dry retarder. And using Screamer Pink, we're going to start painting in our highlights. We're going to be painting these into the areas that are um, on the top facing our light source. Thank you. 
There's quite a bit of going back and forth between Screamer Pink and my Nagaroth Knight. All of this is with the slow dry. Sometimes go hitting it with a hair dryer in order to speed up the drying time and then going back in and doing the same process again until it, it looks the way that I want it. Now I'm going to take some Mushabti Bone and I'm going to mix that into my Screamer Pink just to create a nice highlight colour. And I'm just going to hit the very brightest areas of the cloak with this. Now it looks quite stark here but that's because the paint's wet. When the paint dries it goes much darker. And lastly we're going to take some Druchi Violet and we're going to wash the entire cloth areas with this. This is just to get it into the very um, smallest recesses and also to slightly tint everything back towards Violet. Kind of smooths out any gradients that you didn't quite get exactly right. Make sure it doesn't pull too much on the flat surfaces or on the topmost surfaces. Just use a brush to wick away the excess. Now when that dries you're probably going to find it looks a little bit greasy and a little bit glossy in places. That's fine, just take some Lamian Medium and paint a thin layer of Lamian Medium over the entire cloth areas or anywhere where you put washes really and it'll get rid of that greasy look. Now I'm going to take some dryad bark and I'm going to use this to base coat all of the leather straps that are on the models. Now I'm going to take some Mongfang Brown and I'm actually mixing this in with my dryad bark a little bit. I'm creating a couple of little intermediate layers and I'm just using that to highlight the leather. Now I'm taking some Ushabti Bone, mixing that into my mix as well with the Monfang Brown. And I'm just using that to edge line the leather, just creating little nicks and tears, some damage and some weathering along the edges of the leather. And then just pure Ushabti Bone, reinforcing those nicks and tears, all those details, with some more edge highlights and some much smaller scratches. Now I'm taking a little bit of a bad and black and I've mixed it in some dryad bark and I'm just using that to tint the, in the middles of the uh, leather straps there just to make them a little bit darker. So now I'm going to paint the fur and I'm using Mornfang Brown to base coat it.
Now once that's dry, I'm gonna dry brush it with Eldar Flesh. And these dry paint paints tend to leave a lot of dust and flakes all over the place. My advice, get a really nice big soft brush, like an old makeup brush or something, and just use that to clean your models between paint colors. Now I'm gonna take Agrax Earthshade and I'm just gonna wash over all of that fur, just to give it a little bit of shade and recesses and to tie the dry brush highlights together with the Monfang Brow. Now I'm going to paint the insides of the shields uh, with storm vermin fur and all of the wood I'm going to paint with storm vermin fur. The only other wood is on the harvester's scythe handle. And then I'm going to take some Dawnstone. I'm just going to highlight the wood a little bit more of that. It's important not to fill in the texture too much on these woods. It's very shallow. And it's very easy to fill it in if you use too thick a paint. Now I'm going to use some Pallid Witch Flesh and just kind of making some random streaks to try and simulate wood grain. Now I'm going to take some Methonian camera shade and I'm using quite a lot of wash here and I'm just dumping it all inside the wood there. This will give it a nice tint to make kind of, kind of an ash look. Once that's dry, take some Agrax earth shade and put that in there as well. Now for the glowing eyes, we're going to base coat the insides of the eye sockets with Screamer Pink. Then we're going to take a very a super thin mixture of white scar and screamer pink and we're going to plonk this into the eyes. It's going to take about three attempts to do this and you've got to let it dry fully between each attempt. If you get too much you can pull it out with your brush there. And what this does is as it dries it shrinks down and it leaves the screamer pink on the very outer areas and just leaves the white in the middle. You see me tapping the model there to get rid of an air bubble. And at the end, just take some Screamer Pink and just very carefully paint the edges of the eyes with that Screamer Pink. Base is super simple on this one. Paint all of the base with a bad and black, apart from any bone areas I've already painted and then take some Ethereum Blue dry brush paint and we're just going to dry brush all of the floor with that including the gravestones and the rocks that are on the floor whole thing, dry brush it with Ethereum Blue Then we're going to take some Praxetti White and we're just going to do a dry brush from the front to the back of the base and this is our actual highlight colour here I take some white scar and this is only for the ones with gravestones on. You just use this to edge line the gravestones. It just makes them look a bit more, bit sharper than the dry brush does. Then I'm, I take some Methonian camo shade and I just wash the entire base with that. In some cases I use a little bit of water to just dilute it a bit if it's a bit too green where I don't want it. This gives it a nice uh, shade spirey tint. And that's pretty much it. There's seven models in the skeleton, so it took a little bit longer than I was expecting. Uh, it's mostly wet blending. There's no airbrush in this video, which is pretty good. It's all dry brushing and wet blending, which is kind of an odd combination. If you want to paint, wanted to paint the cloth areas black, then you can do so with the recipe that's on the uh, Oryx video for the cloaks, which I'll put a link in the corner for that. And there we go. That's the last of the Shades by a War bands from this first set of releases. I will be doing the Dwarves and the Skaven as they come out in February. Um, I'll 
let you know when those are actually going to go up. Games Workshop haven't given release dates for those yet, so I don't know. I no preview this week because I'm probably going to take a week off because I haven't had time to paint anything for myself or take a break for a while now. Um, I'm going to be trying to get some Necromunda models done and maybe also some Adeptus Custodes, but I make no promises. So if you liked this video, then please click the like button, share it, comment, subscribe, all that other YouTube stuff. Thank you if you've subscribed since the last video. Uh, over 3,000 subscribers now. I'm dead chuffed with that. You can follow me on the social medias that are on screen now. And uh, yeah, thanks for being excellent and watching my videos. Bye.